Stepney was given a hero's welcome when he returned home to the Bluebell Railway. All the engines and volunteers whistled and cheered for him. All except for Captain Baxter. Now, it wouldn't be fair to say that the old captain was scornful, but he was very jealous. He had wanted to visit the Northwestern just as much as Stepney. He grumbled quietly to himself in the sheds that night as Stepney recapped his misadventures on Sodor. Remarkable! exclaimed Adams. It sounds like there are no shortages of surprises on that railway. Fair play to that old car for keeping chase with you. I wonder if you'll be in a book next, added Cromford. Well, I believe it's all nonsense, barked Baxter, who was rather jealous of the idea of Stepney being in a book. Diesels wearing hats and two tank engines pulling 15 coaches? What utter rubbish! Stepney couldn't help but burst out laughing. No engine was wearing any hats, Captain. Besides, Buck and I managed the coaches with ease. A good start is everything you know. I could pull 15 or even more, Captain Baxter announced in the shed. The other stared at him before returning to ask Stepney about his visit away. Captain Baxter brooded to himself, a plot forming in his smoke box. He would put it into action in the morning. Every morning, Captain Baxter is rostered to take a pasture train up the line with some visitors. He decided to put his plot in action the next morning. Excuse me, Primrose, could you do me a favor, my dear? The sleepy tank engine cracked open her eye. Hmm? What would that be, Captain? It's just the manager has ordered extra coaches for my very important train this morning, and I just thought you'd like to be a part of such a grand excursion, grinned Captain Baxter. Primrose was prone to be excited and immediately jumped on the opportunity. She told her crew and they steamed away to collect the coaches. All according to plan, chuckled the conniving captain. When his crew drove him to the platform, they were shocked to see all the coaches the railway had were waiting for them. The passengers were just as surprised, as they weren't sure which coach to board. What's all this? demanded one of the volunteers who operated the station. You have far too many coaches on this train! Take some of them away at once! Captain Baxter wheezed steam and snarled at the volunteer. I didn't shunt these coaches! Take it up with that bloody pipsqueak! Both engine and man argued for so long that it was soon time to leave. The guard blew his whistle and Captain Baxter responded with a will, trying to haul his 20 coaches. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! He called to the coaches, but he was outmatched by the weight of them all, his wheels spinning frantically. His driver dropped sand and tried every trick he knew to get the coaches moving, but it was no good. Captain Baxter's wheels began making a horrid noise, and the passengers held their ears. Stop this at once, shouted a voice from the platform. The driver immediately shut off steam and applied the brakes. Captain Baxter glanced over and gulped. There, standing on the platform, was the manager of the Bluebell Railway. He stormed over to his engine, and another shouting match began. I can't repeat most of the conversation as it contains some harsh words. But needless to say, Baxter was punished severely. He was made to shut all the coaches off the train and was sent to the sheds at once. All his next trains were cancelled for a week. He was still sulking that evening when Stephanie backed in after a busy day. I heard about your little stunt today, Captain. Why would you do something so silly? You could hurt someone, or even yourself. Well, admittedly, I've been rather jealous of your trip to the Northwestern. I wanted to prove I was special and worthy of being in a book, too. Stepney smiled at his friend. You know, if you're lucky, perhaps your little stunt might make it into a book. Doubt it, said Captain Baxter. After all, who would want to read something like that?